Critical Role finally released their statement on the OGL, and to many, it's looking like a big ol' nothing burger, but there's a lot more lying beneath the surface. Today, we're breaking down their statement and what exactly it means so that Critical Role doesn't get into any legal trouble with Wizards of the Coast. Before we break things down, there are a few things to consider, and mostly just it's one big thing with a couple of sub-bullet points underneath it. They are sponsored by DMD Beyond and therefore also Wizards of the Coast. We don't know what their contract looks like. There's no way for us to know. We don't know what clauses it contains. We don't know when it finishes. Secondly, they could have been offered the rumored sweetheart deal, which allows them to contribute significantly less royalties than other third-party publishers. But again, we don't know this for certain. Two, most sponsorship contracts come with a non-disparaging agreement, which means you're not allowed to talk badly about the people who are giving you money. And for the most part, you would think it wouldn't cause a problem up until right now. Now, now is when it's a problem. Three, Critical Role owns a third-party publisher called Darrington Press. That's how we get stuff like this. That means that Critical Role has just as much stakes in this fight as any other third-party publisher. This is the statement put out by Critical Role on their Twitter on Friday, and we're going to go over it chunk by chunk. Okay. Critical Role has always supported creators and game development in the tabletop space. This is absolutely 100% true. They've done Call of Cthulhu on their channel before. Undeadwood used a completely different RPG system, as did Sam's One Shot. I think the most recently the familiar the the familial problem. One Shot also used a completely different RPG system. We stand by our industry peers, as well as anyone who takes a risk creating a new system or developing an original idea. This is as close to saying fuck the OGL as they possibly, possibly can get. We're standing by our industry peers, as well as anybody who takes a risk. Orc is a huge risk. If anybody wants to publish underneath it, D&D has been the standard and has been the thing that's most widely recognized. The beauty of gaming comes from the opportunity to share inclusive, diverse, and compelling stories from a wide spectrum of creators. That's exactly why we launched our own game publishing company a few years ago, because we believe that broadening the field of creators boosts the entire industry. Taking control away from third-party creators is a bad idea. Matthew Mercer liked this tweet. This is, again, as toe to the line as he can possibly, possibly get. This is on Twitter. It's Cam Banks at Boy Monster. Hot take. D&D is the number one TTRPG in the world because of the open game license and the community of designers and players this has fostered. Not because it's the better game, not even because it's called D&D. Matt can't tweet about this, obviously. We s tweets can be used in a court of law to sue somebody else against you for a lot of things, including breach of contract. You will notice no one on the cast. That I can see. I've checked Marisha. Nothing. Sam, nothing. Liam, nothing. We go over here under likes. What have we got? We've got a bunch of uh, Vox Machina, Brian W. Foss. I didn't know Ashley deleted her Twitter. Hard on September 3rd. I don't think Tal's on ever. This statement is also as close to a fucked OGL 2.0 as possible. The success we have experienced is thanks to the passion and interest of the greater tabletop community, and we commit to fostering an environment that allows everyone the opportunity to easily share the stories they wish to tell. That seems as close as they can possibly get. Between Max like of the that particular tweet and this, this is them towing the absolute line. The amount of work and amount of finesse that this took to put together. The success we have experienced is thanks to the passion and interest of the greater tabletop community. Not thanks, d, &D. They're very carefully using words like tabletop and role playing, not using branded words, which tells me that this is them saying, we're with all of y'all. We can't say anything else other than this. This is all we can say, because if we say anything else, we're going to be in hot water. Because again, that non-disparagement agreement. What do I think this means for Critical Role as a whole? I think what they need to do right now is keep their lips tightly shut. They need to focus on the launch of Legend of Vox Machina season two on Amazon and not say anything more. If they do anything like change systems or drop D&D Beyond as a sponsor or anything like that, I guarantee that the legal battle would have included an NDA. You can't say shit about what we said. You can't say shit about why we did it. You have to stay 
silent. It's just going to be a sudden shift and there's going to be no other words on it. We can infer as much as we'd like from all of this. <laughs> Us as the community need to stand by them and be understanding and kind towards them when these things happen. And as for me, I don't know, this is feeling very familiar to where I was last year, which is standing here going, I don't know what I'm going to cover. My game's gone away. And then I switched to this and wasn't able to cover it much, which was a bummer for me because I wanted to cover it more. And now I need to get caught up on my notes. I wrapped up campaign three episodes one through 18 over here. And if you want to check that out, you should click this video here and go watch this one. Okay.